Hi, Alyssa. Thanks for joining us today. Well, we appreciate your time and interest. Today we are talking about exploring Ashland University's Department of Music. And uh, we just wanna welcome you to this opportunity to meet with our faculty. Um, we're gonna go on ahead and do some introductions before we get started. So Joe, if you could switch us to the next slide here. I'm Keith Ramsdell and I am Vice President for Enrollment Management and Marketing at AU. And with me today, I have a couple special guests. I have Dr. Tom Reed, and Tom is uh, department chair. And Tom, before I move on to Joe, maybe you could tell us just a little bit about how long you've been at AU and a little bit about your background. Sure, um, nice to be with you all. Um, I've taught at Ashland University actually since 1984, and I became a full-time faculty member in 1986. So I've been here 35 years. And my uh, area of music is woodwind instruments and music theory and jazz. So I teach courses in all those areas. Enjoy it very much. Great. Thanks, Dr. Reed. And also with us is Mr. Joe Lewis. And uh, Joe is Director of Bands and Recruiting. And Joe, could you just tell us a little bit more about what you do and how long you've been at AU? Yeah, absolutely. This is my fourth year here. And uh, as you mentioned, I'm the Director of Bands. Um, so I conduct the University Marching Band, the Symphonic Band, and I also uh, conduct the Pep Band as well and uh, teach a couple other classes within the department and also spend a significant amount of time uh, recruiting, speaking to students, uh, going out to high schools, setting up outreach events for the department. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a really great experience. And we're just looking forward to, uh, to doing this webinar right here and uh, continuing to move forward with recruiting and bringing students onto our campus and into our department. Great, thank you. Well, thanks to both of you for joining me today and for all of our guests. Um, before we get started, I do wanna do just kind of a, an overview of our agenda today. And so what we're gonna try and accomplish maybe in the next 30 minutes or so is an overview of Ashland University for those of you who might not be familiar with the university. We also wanna focus a little time on department strengths in the Department of Music. We wanna mention our faculty. We're gonna talk a little bit about our ensembles um, and how students can participate um, in the department, whether they're majors or non-majors, minors, whatever the case might be, as well as the scholarship opportunities that are available to all of our students. We'll talk a little bit about the curriculum, and then we'll talk about those um, audition requirements that all of our students need to go through. And then certainly we'll have time at the end for question and answer. So um, if there's something that we miss or something that comes up along the way, You've got the chat box there. Feel free to just type your questions in the chat box and we will address those questions when we get to the end of our session um, here today. So with that, let's go on ahead and get started. We wanna first talk a little bit about Ashland University. Um, Ashland, as you probably know, is a private university founded in 1878. Uh, so we are not new. We've been around for um, a long time, located right here in Ashland, Ohio, which is about 60 minutes south of Cleveland. And uh, we have a very diverse population of students on our campus, but out of our total enrollment, about 2,200 students are undergraduate residential students living here on campus. Um, and those students are from 47 states. Now, I, I gotta tell you, um, this was not a number that I was familiar with until we were putting this together. And that's pretty remarkable for a school this size to have students from almost every state in the country and not only that, but we also have students from 20 different countries around the world. So very diverse population. And uh, we think that that diversity um, enriches the lives of all of our students, faculty and staff here at Ashland University. I also wanna talk about just a few quick facts that we have regarding AU. Um, we are ranked, uh, and this is a new ranking. It's been, we've been ranked high uh, in the past, but this is a new ranking for this academic year. We've been ranked among the top regional universities by US News and World Report. And we've also been named as one of Princeton Review's best in the Midwest. And uh, both of those are significant achievements for um, our institution. We're very proud of those. And we think that that says a lot about the quality of the education and the quality of the institution. Uh, currently, just a few statistics. Our fall to fall <laughs> retention rate uh, for incoming students is 77%, which is excellent for a school. Um, of, of um, Ashland size. We have a student to faculty ratio of 13 to one, 
uh, which really indicates uh, the quality um, of that personal relationship that our students get to have with our faculty, which we think is so very important. Our six-year graduation rate is 61%, which is excellent, again, compared to um, similar institutions. And then finally, 79% of our graduates are employed or pursuing further education within six months after graduation. Uh, we know that in the news, a lot of times we hear more and more about the significance of the outcomes of higher education. And so we always think it's important to say, you know, we are committed to, um, to the success of our students, both while they're in our classrooms and after they leave our classrooms. So, so very important these days. So uh, just wanted to bring some of those highlights to you. The next thing that I wanna talk about just briefly is what we refer to as the Ashland promise. Now, lots of schools will make promises. They'll put things out there and they'll say, you know, hey, this is, this is what we commit to you. But here are some things that are really the pillars that Ashland University stands on. We promise to teach you how to think, not what to think. We promise to work with you to create an individualized plan for your future. And we promise you an affordable education. And in just a minute, I'm gonna talk more about that. We promise that you will be guided by mentors invested in you as an individual, and that includes both our faculty and our, our excellent uh, staff, and they will develop um, within a diverse community of respect, design personalized transformative experiences to develop you as a person who works, serves, and leads with integrity. And we promise you a lifelong commitment as we continue to help you discern your life calling and make a positive impact on your family, community, and the world at large. To be essentially boil that down um, into a nutshell, we are looking at every single student who enrolls at Ashland University as an individual, making sure that this is a good fit for you if you choose to enroll, helping you to have a, a personalized, outstanding experience while you're enrolled here, and then to continue to work with you even after you graduate. That is the Ashland promise in a nutshell. Now, as affordable as uh, as a uh, Talking about affordability, I do want to mention something that we just rolled out um, last week, which is our tuition relief scholarship. And the tuition relief scholarship, and there's a lot of verbiage here. I don't need to go into the details of all of this. But essentially, the tuition relief scholarship, we know that our students who are looking to AU or who are already enrolled at AU right now, this past year has been a real challenge. And so we want to make sure that we're able to support you as students the best we possibly can. And so essentially what this program does is for first time, full time residential students living on campus in the fall, anything that remains after your financial aid package or, or other scholarships, whatever that gap is in your tuition, you pay that in the fall. Then in the spring, as long as you've still, you're still in good academic standing, which we anticipate our students will be, we will pick that difference up in the spring semester. So we kind of refer to this as a two for one. It's an amazing opportunity. Um, I have not, I've never worked at a school myself that committed this number of uh, scholarships and this dollar amount um, to the success of um, our students when it comes to uh, tuition relief. But because of the donation of a, of a major um, donor, um, we're able to offer this for this year. So pretty amazing and um, Again, Joe, on the next slide, it just gives some of the details here. But we know that you may have some additional questions about this. We encourage you to contact us after this if you have specific um, questions, um, but really an outstanding opportunity, making sure that um, the Ashland University uh, education is affordable for all of our students. So those are the things that I wanted to cover, everything about AU kind of in a nutshell. With this, um, I am going to um, hand things over now to uh, Mr. Lewis, and um, let's. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about the Department of Music now? Well, um, what we're going to talk about a number of things here as we go on, but the, the Department of Music um, is a very strong part of the university's culture. Um, obviously, we provide uh, musical entertainment, uh, concerts, um, recitals. Uh, the marching band performs at football games. Uh, we have a jazz ensemble that tours as well. Um, and then obviously we have majors that come here um, and want to be prepared to pursue a career in music, either, either by playing their instrument or 
um, teaching music out into the public schools. So um, there's a lot of great things that we kind of alluded to already, just talking about the university as a whole, that uh, in microcosm in the department exist as well. So we have many outstanding um, artist teachers um, and also scholars who are dedicated to encouraging and inspiring you every day. That's what we do. Um, that's, that's one of the great advantages to a small school is you have these professors that want to teach you, they want to mentor you. Um, and we have a small enough class size, we can really do that. So um, looking at those small class sizes, you know, we were able to give that individual attention um, and mentor you and prepare you for a successful career. Um, I already kind of mentioned the ensembles a little bit. Um, they're an active part of campus life. We, we play, we give, we give performances. Um, and then there's, there's been opportunities in the past to travel um, just different places, sometimes locally, sometimes uh, domestically. And there's have been times where we've traveled internationally um, as well. So lots of, uh, lots of great things that are going on in uh, the Department of Music here at AU. And we are hoping that, uh, that you'll wanna be a part of it. And so um, with that, we have a number of faculty that help um, make things um, as smooth as we can and make things run really well. Um, our chair, department chair is Dr. Tom Reed, um, who also is kind of our woodwind specialist here um, and also teaches uh, many of our music theory classes. Um, Dr. Ron Blackley uh, is our director of choral activities. So he conducts almost all of our uh, choral ensembles um, and also is our conducting uh, professor as well and also works in the music education side of things too. Uh, Dr. Scott Garlock is our uh, jazz, uh, jazz ensemble director, also um, does low brass um, and music history. And then, as I mentioned before, I'm the director of bands here, and then I also teach courses in music education. So along with that, we also have uh, 14 additional adjunct faculty. Uh, many of them are, are applied instructors as well, who are faculty that when they're not teaching here are out in the real world doing, uh, doing the job. They're playing professionally, uh, they might be teaching in other places also, um, but again, they're artists on their instrument uh, or are specialists in their field um, and provide an education here as well. Um, and we are really able with that faculty able to create a nice well-rounded education, um, regardless of whether you want to major or minor or just participate, you're going to have a great experience in this department with the excellent faculty that we have. And And so going on, um, sorry, I thought I heard somebody was gonna say something. Um, so we'll speak a little bit more in detail um, about ensembles. So um, we have a number of ensembles here, um, instrumental and vocal. And so uh, we'll take a few minutes and just uh, talk about those um, a little bit. So uh, with that, we will start with uh, the bands. And uh, here you see a, a picture of our Ashland University Jazz Orchestra, and that is Dr. Uh, Scott Garlock uh, conducting that group. Um, so since I've talked about that, uh, the jazz ensemble here um, is a full big band. Um, that uh, particular ensemble does require a short audition. Um, it's a little bit of prepared music, a little bit of improv, um, and it's a pretty painless audition. Um, this group has toured in the past to, to Spain. Um, we host a jazz event every year called Maple Rock, where we bring lots of high school groups in and then uh, some sort of a feature group uh, that comes and plays this year will be the Cleveland Jazz Orchestra, not too far away, but a very talented group as well. Uh, they come in in the spring and uh, they'll play with us and we'll have, a, have an event there. Um, jumping over to the marching band, um, we're very blessed as old as this university is, founded in 1878, we have a comparatively old marching band. Our marching band started in 1923. There's a lot of private schools in the state that don't have marching bands at all. We're very fortunate not only to have a marching band, we have one that is almost 100 years old and has a, a very rich history um, with lots of great performances, great directors that have come through and, uh, and been here. So uh, marching band consists of about uh, anywhere between 65 and 80 students. Um, we rehearse three days a week from 4.30 to 6, and we have color guard, we have full drum line, we have feature twirlers, and one of the great things about marching band is the relationships that students make early on in their uh, college career. So with the marching band, we do have a band camp that starts about a week, a week and a half before classes start, 
And as part of that, students who are going to live on campus can come and move into campus early. They move in with another band member and they're able to make friends right off the bat and have uh, people that live with them that have something in common with them. Um, so it's a really, really great advantage. Um, the students really love that part of it. They come in for camp they make friends. They get familiar with the university before classes ever even start. So it's a really, really nice advantage they have with that. Um, we do our band camp and then the Eagle Marching Band, we rehearse three days a week. Like I said, we perform at all of our home football games, which are typically five Saturdays throughout the fall semester uh, up until about mid-November. Um, we perform at all of those home football games. We also host a high school uh, marching band event um, in which we bring area high schools in to perform at our stadium. We have a beautiful stadium uh, with new, new style AstroTurf, um, lots of space. Uh, it's a really, really nice facility. Um, so we're really proud to bring uh, students on campus and see that. Um, and then at the end of the season, we usually do an end of the year concert where we play through all of our music for the year. Um, and uh, from there, we transition into our university symphonic band. Uh, symphonic band is usually around 50 to 60 members. Um, and they perform a winter concert. We'll perform a concert in March. And then we'll perform one uh, either at the end of April or beginning of May. Uh, depending on how the calendar falls. And the symphonic band will tour, do a short tour, uh, maybe a high school concert every year. And then we, we have done in the past um, a local uh, domestic tour like to Chicago or maybe like a New York or Nashville, something like that, where we've, uh, we've gone and toured and played different places. So um, the symphonic band is a really, uh, again, three days a week rehearsal. Um, we are performing and playing music right now as full band uh, we're split in half, so it's two smaller groups, but we are playing full band, full ensemble music. So uh, it's been really great. We're working on the whole suites right now, um, along with we'll be working on some a uh, couple of Ham Sam Hazo pieces. Um, we've done a little bit of Granger lately. Um, so we really uh, dig into a lot of really great concert band literature with the symphonic band, um, and it's really a lot of fun. Um, moving on to the AU Pep Band. This was a group that I started four years ago. We hadn't had an organized uh, pep band until I came here and then I started one and actually organized it. We were able to create a class for it so they could get credit. Um, but we have a pep band that plays for all the men's and women's home basketball games. Um, and they, it's about 25 to 30 students that play for that. So uh, we play for those games, most of those in January and February, maybe a couple rehearsals at the beginning of the season, but then we just go play games. We have a lot of fun, play marching band music. Um, it's really a great time. Um, I talked about the jazz, jazz orchestra already. We also have a couple of small jazz combos that are open really to anyone that wants to explore jazz. Um, I've, we've had tuba players, flute players, you know, some of the less common jazz instruments perform in the combos and play, and they really have a great time, a lot of great learning, uh, learn how to improv, learn how to play, you know, jazz uh, in that jazz environment. Um, and then finally, we have our Ashland Area Community Concert Band, which unfortunately this year has not been able to rehearse. Uh, but uh, I took over that group last fall when uh, Len Salvo fully retired uh, from things. And um, when I took it over, we jumped up to about 60 to 65 members in that group. Um, but unfortunately, with the restrictions of uh, COVID, we were not able to continue after, uh, after March. Um, but hoping to get that started again this fall. And that is open to students as well. Um, we do have a handful of AU students who do play in the community band um, and enjoy their time in that. So that's kind of the bands in yeah. a nutshell. Um, that's the bands in a nutshell. So I'll move on. We'll talk about uh, a little bit about the, the choirs here. Um, kind of our flagship vocal ensemble, the University Choir. Um, that's the, uh, again, that's where the majority of, uh, of folks sing. Um, they do many of their performances over in the chapel, which is a beautiful facility um, for them to sing in. They rehearse three days a week again. Um, and they've done a number of tours in the past. Uh, every so many years they've gone to Europe as well, um, but they've often gone uh, to tours and traveled and performed um, in many different places. Um, along with that, there's also the select group is called the Chamber Singers, um, which is an audition group, obviously, so is the, the choir as a whole, uh, but the Chamber Singers um, is kind of the, uh, the select group uh, of our choral ensembles. And again, they, they perform as well uh, in tour of different places. Um, we also have our women's chorus um, that's uh, on campus here. And then along with that is our Ashland, uh, Ashland area chorus. Uh, again, is like the community band, but community choir, um, number of residents. And again, that's open to, uh, to AU students as well. So uh, those are our choral ensembles in a nutshell. Um, Dr. V, I don't know if I left anything out that you might wanna hit on there in the choirs. 
Sure, sure. The, uh, the university choir is a mixed chorus, men's and women's voices, and they do the most extensive touring of the choirs. Uh, the women's chorus, of course, is open to women. The chamber singers, as you said, is a select choir from the university choir membership, and the chamber singers annually perform our Madrigal Feast, which is a tradition of more than 40 years now at Ashland University, the Madrigal Feast, where they uh, perform music from the Elizabethan era with a full meal and theatrical entertainment. And that is just a really fun tradition at Ashland that our whole uh, local community participates in. So the chamber singers do our Madrigal Feast every December. Hope you could be a part of that someday uh, if you come to Ashland. Okay. And then finally, we have some of our, uh, what we would call small ensembles here. We have a brass ensemble, a woodwind ensemble. Um, again, I mentioned the jazz combos. We actually have two jazz combos. Um, and we also have a string ensemble. So um, if you wanted to major in music or even just participate, but play violin, we haven't, we haven't talked about orchestra, uh, but play a string instrument. We have the string ensemble. Um, we also have a percussion ensemble. I kept that one off the list here, but we also do have a percussion ensemble um, which has really grown in popularity the last couple of years. Um, Elizabeth Procopio is our percussion instructor here. Uh, she does a fantastic job and has really grown the percussion ensemble, do a lot of neat music, interesting music, new music, modern music, um, doing all kinds of different things. So that's become a really kind of a popular ensemble within the department as well. Not all of those folks in all, any of the small ensembles, not all of them um, are majors. These are, all of these ensembles are really open to uh, majors, minors, or just if you wanna participate um, like I said, um, the bands, uh, specifically the jazz ensemble does require an audition to get in. As I mentioned before, the marching band does not require an audition. The, con the symphonic band does not require an audition. The pet band does not require an audition. So those groups don't, you just sign up and you can come play. We'd be happy to have you. Um, the choirs do have an audition um, where there's just some short, uh, some short music reading activities and some singing a little bit of prepared pieces um, to to find out uh, what would be the best fit for you as far as the choirs go. Um, but uh, some of the ensembles have that audition, but some of them don't. So that's just a really great way uh, to get involved with that. So um, speaking of getting involved, I'm gonna uh, turn it back over to, um, to, I'll turn it over to Dr. Reed here and we'll just give you a little bit of information um, on how to, uh, how to participate in different categories and, uh, and what that means. So Dr. Reed. So to participate in music at Ashland University, there are several ways to do that. You can major in music, you can minor in music, or you can be an ensemble participant. And I should say also, we didn't put this on the slide, but you can take elective courses in music that aren't ensembles. You can take music theory or music history, things like that. So all, um, all the ensembles, as Mr. Lewis mentioned, all the ensembles are open to all students. We don't have any ensembles that you have to be a music major. Um, having students from all over campuses in the ensembles is very important to us. I did a, I researched it a little bit one time and I found out that if I looked in the band and the choir and the jazz band, I found students from 40 different majors. So students from every major essentially on campus are part of our ensembles. We have them scheduled in the late afternoon. So you will find minimal conflicts with your courses. And we also have them scheduled so that you can be in multiple ensembles and they don't overlap in rehearsal time. So regardless of what you're doing academically at Ashland, you're welcome to participate in the department in these areas, major, minor, or participant. Well, Dr. Reed, if I can jump in just real quick, because I know as, as we were preparing for this, you know, we talked about this a little bit. You know, my background is in theater, but all through my undergraduate career, I also actively participated in music ensembles. And I, I just think, we can't, uh, we can't emphasize that too much. You know, we may have people who listen to this, either they're listening today or listening to our recording later, who maybe they're not thinking about the major or the minor. They stumble across this uh, recording. They might be thinking, really, I can participate in music and I don't have to be a major. I don't have to be a minor. I just think that's such a rich opportunity, like you said, not just for our majors, but for all of our students on campus. It's not only a great way to continue that interest in music, um, as you've already expressed, but it's also a great way to kind of um, uh, get away from some of the other coursework that you're doing into something that you can really enjoy, um, fulfill a, you know, an artist, um, you know, if you've got a heart for artistry and a heart for music, 
it's just a great way to stay involved in something that um, you really enjoyed in high school. I just think it's amazing that there are, that our students are able to do that here at AU. Yeah, so it's, it's a wonderful way for many students to, to to fit into the campus in a way other outside of their major. Mm -hmm. They make friends in the ensembles. They get a, a good outlet. They get a release from the pressures of their of their other major. They make friends. It's it's a really great uh, way to be involved in campus, and it's an important part of, of life for for so many students to continue being involved in music. And, and what's important to us to make that possible. And I think we do a real good job of making it work for them. So to major in music, uh, there's a range of courses you take. Uh, first of all, we have two majors. You can choose a music education major or a Bachelor of Arts in music. The music education major prepares you to teach music in the schools, pre-kindergarten through 12th grade, instrumental music, vocal music, and general music. And that uh, degree comes with the Ohio teacher's, teacher's licensure. The Bachelor of Arts degree in music is a general degree in music for people that want all sorts of different careers in and out of music. It's a, a serious music major, but it also allows time for a minor and allows time to really focus on your general education in a strong way. So you're a well-rounded person and you have a music degree. So the students in the major programs, both of them, take courses in music theory, music history, oral skills, piano conducting, instruments, lessons, ensembles, and the music education majors have a really robust set of field experiences where they go out into schools and learn about teaching and learn to use the things they've developed in, in our classrooms. Minoring in music is also an option. So many majors, require a minor in an outside field. So if you are an English major, for example, you have to choose a minor. And some business majors are required to choose a minor. And so the minor in music uh, can be paired with all sorts of, all sorts of different majors, but uh, business and religion uh, are two of the ones that we encounter, especially that students uh, find a good pairing with the minor in music. And those students take sort of a mini version of the major, it's about, maybe 20 or 25% of the courses that the majors take, but they take lessons, they're in the ensembles, they take some, some academic courses. So that's an option for students uh, as part of their degree program. And we could go on to the next one, I think. All right, so we've talked a lot about our ensembles because they're so important to us and to our campus, but uh, you can just see on the slide how we think about it. It's a great way to continue your enjoyment of music making. It's open to non-majors, there's lots of non-majors. Audition requirements are reasonable and not too threatening. And here's the big one we haven't discussed yet, that scholarships are available uh, by an audition for music minors, music majors, and music participants. I think Mr. Lewis is gonna talk in detail about those auditions, but uh, don't miss this point that you can receive a scholarship for your music participation at Ashland in different levels. Absolutely. So um, in talking about scholarships, um, we have a, uh, a platform that we use to schedule um, scholarships and auditions. So I'll talk to you first um, how we schedule auditions, that process, and then we'll just kind of go into a little bit of detail on what the audition itself um, actually entails. So um, this slide here, what you're looking at is the uh, splash page. If you were to go to get accepted and click on login, um, this is the page that you would see. Um, and you can see the, um, I don't have the link on this one, but it is later on. Um, but we do have the link to the website to get accepted. Um, that is the Ashland University specific get accepted. Um, but what you'll do is come in here um, and you can see where it says down on the bottom there where it says don't have an account, you can sign up. It's kind of like a, a little bit like a LinkedIn kind of thing where you can create a profile, set up some information already about yourself before you would even go to explore places where you could auditions or organizations you could get into an audition. Um, so you can set up your profile and get that information there. Um, and what that does is allows you to go to, let's say, Ashland to audition or any other university that utilizes this platform um, to set up an, an audition. 
Um, so the big thing to keep in mind on this page is that this is separate from the uh, application to admission to AU. So there's kind of a two-step thing. You'll apply to be accepted to AU. Once you're accepted to AU, you say, I want to major in music. Um, you say, I want to major in music. And then there's this, this platform you go to to create a little profile there and then set up your uh, schedule, your audition date um, there. So you can do that at getaccepted.com. Um, there's also at the end of this slideshow, you'll see the, the link to our Get Accepted uh, AU page uh, where it'll take you directly to that. You can set up a profile and be directly uh, attached to Ashland University Department of Music. Um, once you do create a, an application specific to AU, we receive notification for that and we do confirm your application for that. And the reason I bring that up is that we are not so big that you'll apply and not receive a response. Um, to be quite honest with you, those responses uh, come straight to me, and then I'm the one that responds to them. So if you were to apply uh, for an audition at AU, um, I'm the guy that's going to respond to you. So I am a human being on the other end of the computer that will respond to you and help you. Um, I give you my information, including my cell phone. I can talk, text, email, um, whatever you want to do, but I'm here and open and willing to do whatever it takes to help you set up an audition uh, at AU. So that's um, a little bit about the intro to Get Accepted. Um, this is what our website page looks like um, when we're talking about Get Accepted and where to go to find out uh, audition scheduling information. And as you can see here, we do have a few days left yet this year to audition. We have Saturday, March 20th, we have Friday, March 26th, and we have Saturday, April 10th. Um, so those are some dates that are available still to audition for this year. Um, and as you can see, preference will be given to students starting before April 11th uh, for scholarships. So those are the few days that are left. And if you go to this page right here on our department, you go to music audition dates um, or go to auditions and admissions, you'll see this link right here, getaccepted.com slash Ashland Music. And that's where you can go directly to the Ashland scheduling page, create your profile and jump on uh, and get started with your audition, uh, audition application. So the requirements specific to uh, auditions, it's slightly different depending on whether you want to major um, or minor or participate, or if you want to be a vocalist or an instrumentalist. So uh, we'll kind of go down from majors uh, down to participants, but majors and minors, um, you will prepare selections on your primary instrument or voice. Um, and we ask that for that, that you don't prepare uh, band music, that you prepare either etudes or solos or um, some sort of uh, music that's specific to your instrument or voice. Um, there is some sight reading for instrumentalists. Uh, we ask for a few scales as well. Um, and then we do just a short musicianship screening, just some basic music reading and uh, oral skills exercises. Uh, that we do just to, to see where your ear is at um, as far as rhythms and pitch um, and reading and things like that. And then we just have a short interview and conversation with faculty members. We like to get to know you. Uh, we, like to, um, we like to know what your goals are. What are your life goals? And what can we do to help you further those goals? What can we do to help mentor you um, to get you where you want to be in, uh, in life, whether it's majoring and minoring? Uh, in music, if that's part of your career path, or even if you just want to participate, we'd like to talk to you, you know, why, why do you want to participate in the ensembles? What is it that you're hoping to gain? And that way we know, you know, we can get to know you, and we know how to better serve you as a faculty. Um, so then uh, as far as participants, um, for instrumental ensemble participants, just again, a prepared piece uh, or etude of your choice. Um, and we ask again that you don't use ensemble music, but uh, something that is for your instrument can be even just a single piece of music, um, but uh, a prepared piece or etude, um, and then a number of scales uh, that you can choose. Um, but we like to see you know, three or four scales, um, probably a chromatic scale, um, but we like to uh, allow you to play a few scales. That way we can uh, hear those talents as well. Um, for vocal ensemble participants, um, we'll do some vocal warm-ups just to determine your range, um, and then some rhythmic and melodic echoes and sight singing. Um, for vocal ensembles, we like to, to know that you can read uh, music to some degree, rhythm, rhythms or melodies. Um, and then sometimes we'll have, if you want to do a prepared song, if you have a prepared piece of music that you'd like to share with us, um, we love it when students do that. Uh, but we do just ask that you bring the sheet music for that so we can see it. 
um, and be able to kind of follow along with that. So, um, so those are the requirements for the auditions. They're really, um, they're, they're really not bad. Um, in my opinion, to be quite candid, I, I think it's a, it's a really great, um, uh, requirement for uh, for auditions but it's not uh, it's not something that's overwhelming we we don't want to overwhelm students but we like to see where you're at and we love to hear um, the talent that uh, that you have to share so that's uh, with that I'll turn it back over to to Keith great thanks Mr. And, uh, Lewis. we'll go from there yeah awesome great well I, I appreciate this you know as someone new to AU myself it's it's very helpful to me to kind of get this overview of the Department of Music and uh, all the different opportunities, both for majors and minors, as well as just participants. And uh, with that, we want to be able to turn it over to our participants today to see if there are any questions, specific questions about the Department of Music or related areas. So I see Alyssa and Maddie are joining us today. And so if either of you have questions for us, uh, you can either type those directly into the chat box or feel free to unmute yourself and uh, we can answer any questions that you might have at this point. Hi, um, I would turn on my camera, but it's broken. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Bye>. okay. <laughs> it's great. Everything's great. All right. Um, so I did originally put that I wanted to do a recorded audition but I've gotten really frustrated with recording myself. So is there any way I can switch to like um, a live one? Yes, absolutely. And I see your question in the chat here as well. Um, yes, we can absolutely do that. And that date would be perfectly fine. Um, okay. What we would ask you to do is do, um, I know you have the, the link to get accepted. So go ahead and jump on there, um, create your profile. You can set it up for that date and the time that works for you. And uh, okay. we'd, we'd look forward to, uh, to having you audition. Once you do that, I'll be able to confirm that and get accepted. And you and I have been in touch a little bit already, but we can just stay in touch and uh, make sure you're all set to go for that. All right, thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you, Maddie. Let me add for you, Maddie, that uh, with Get Accepted, uh, they have a tech support email. And so if you're in the process of working on getting videos uploaded or, or scheduling and you have questions or you have any tech issues, uh, just find that link, and, and they are very good about responding to, to students or to us if we're having an issue, we need to get something sorted out. So uh, just be persistent on that if you're trying to figure something out, and we'll get the help for you. Great. Any other questions? Mr. Lewis, do we have anything else in the chat box that came in? I see nothing else in the chat. All right. Again, back to Maddie, any other questions? Or Alyssa, did you have any questions for us today? No, I didn't have any more questions. Great, all right, thank you. All right, well, we're gonna go to the, the last slide. Then one of the things that we just wanna leave you with is, you know, I, I've done enough of these types of uh, online events that I know that it's very easy to think of questions after the fact. And so we want to leave you with um, our contact information. Uh, so you see our, my email is here as well as Mr. Lewis's email. And so if you have questions specifically about um, admission to the university, or if I can put you in touch with a member of my team, um, as far as a campus tour or anything like that, I would love to be able to help you with that. And certainly Mr. Lewis uh, can answer all of your questions about the Department of Music specifically on the ensembles, majors, minors, those types of things. And so uh, definitely reach out to us and uh, we're, we're certainly willing to take your questions and follow up um, the best way we know how. So we would love to stay connected with you in that regard. So with that, I just want to bring our time together to a close. Um, uh, Mr. Lewis, Dr. Reed, before I do, any final thoughts or comments from either of you? Not really. It's nice to talk to everyone today. Thank you. So as I mentioned, we've got upcoming dates, March 20th, March 26th, April 10th. Love to have you come out and uh, hear your talents. Fantastic. Well, I just want to thank uh, Mr. Lewis and Dr. Reed for joining us today and telling us about the Department of Music and the opportunities that are available there. And to our guests, thank you for your interest in National University as well as the Department of Music. And again, please feel free to follow up with us um, if you have any questions. 
Uh, we wish you all the best and uh, stay healthy out there.